On today's episode, we are celebrating over 200,000 Tesla deliveries in Q2, new Cybertruck updates, Tesla's mega packs start powering California, there's yet another delay on the new FSD beta, the boring company heads to Florida, and Starlink gets a new challenge. So let's get going. All right, so we found out last week that Tesla has officially delivered 201,250 vehicles in the second quarter of 2021. Their total production for the period was 206,421 cars. This is overall pretty good news. It means that Tesla has met or exceeded the general expectations from Wall Street for the first half of this year even in the face of some pretty gnarly challenges from supply chain disruption to production delays. Obviously, the vast majority of the vehicles delivered were the Model 3 and Model Y. We haven't yet seen a breakdown in numbers between the two of them. We also haven't seen the split between production at the Fremont plant and Giga Shanghai, so I'm still very curious to see those numbers. We know that the new Model S played only a very small part in Tesla's Q2 results, we can see 1,890 Model S's were delivered. That could be entirely the Plaid version, though a few long range may have crept in as well. It's hard not to think about how much stronger the numbers could have been if the Model S and Model X had dropped when they were originally expected and not been delayed so long. If that had worked out, it would have made for an epic Q2, but Tesla still did really well even without the luxury cars, without the tax credits, without the microchips, and with a whole lot of FUD in their way. So good job. Of course, the same day we drop a new Cybertruck video, Elon goes out to release some new information. I knew it was coming, we even said it in the video. But anyways, Elon revealed that the rear wheel steering is on its way to the production model of the Tesla Cybertruck. Adding this feature will allow the Cybertruck to be much more agile than your average pickup truck. Think of a much tighter turning radius and even the ability to drive in a kind of diagonal direction, kind of like a crab. I think it's likely that Tesla is starting to feel some pressure from all of the electric truck competition that has been lining up over the past couple of years. The GMC Hummer EV was announced a few months ago with rear wheel steering in their top trim level, and the Rivian R1T has been heavily advertised with the four motor tank turn capability. These extra maneuvering features really shine in off-roading situations where working through narrow paths and avoiding obstacles is more common. When it comes to the real world though, rear wheel steering is definitely more practical in more situations than the tank turn. Try doing that spin on pavement and uh, you'll make a lot of smoke and lose a lot of tire. Elon made sure to tease us by mentioning lots of other great things that will be coming, but your guess is as good as mine on those. It's got me wondering about upcoming price adjustments to the Cybertruck line. We're still looking at the same price tags from 2019, and that's starting to look too good to be true. In the meantime, the price of every other Tesla vehicle has increased without warning. I guess that this summer we're getting an updated spec sheet for all Cybertruck variations and an updated price list to go along with it. A new Tesla Energy project consisting of 142 megapack batteries has been turned on in California's Ventura County to create a giant energy farm that is replacing a gas peaker plant, finally. The project is called the Satakoi Battery Storage System and it came about when the local community in Oxnard fought against having a new gas powered peaker plant that would help respond to the energy demand during peak times. Instead they settled on a proposal from Erevan Asset Management, a renewable energy company, to deploy a massive 100 megawatt and 400 megawatt hour battery system to help power the peak energy demand. Basically, California doesn't have enough capacity in their electrical grid to meet the highest levels of demand. Like for example, when everyone has got air conditioners chooching away. So when a certain location taxes the grid beyond capacity, the natural gas powered peaker plants will fire up and start burning gas to create additional electricity and cover the excess. It's really a terrible system, mostly because these gas plants are extremely polluting and expensive to run and Tesla Megapack is a really great alternative to this whole system. When the demand on the system is low, the batteries can be filled up, and when the demand reaches its peak, the batteries can be discharged. This particular battery farm is now one of the largest energy storage sites in the US, and the whole thing was put together in just nine months. The battery facility can virtually power the town of Oxnard for four hours or all of Ventura County for 30 minutes. 
Hey folks, by the way, we're doing our very first prize giveaway here at the Tesla space for newsletter subscribers only. We've got our very own bottle of Tesla tequila up for grabs. Details on how to enter at the end of this video. Another week, another delay for Tesla's new version 9 beta of its full self-driving software. I think Elon has been saying that this update would be ready in a week for about three months now, so that's not a great sign. The last we heard before this was on June 25th when Elon said it would hopefully be ready next week. Then on July 3rd, he wrote, FSD 9 beta is shipping soon, I swear. Generalized self-driving is a hard problem as it requires solving a large part of real-world AI. Didn't expect it to be so hard, but the difficulty is obvious in retrospect. It does feel like progress that Elon is speaking a bit more candidly about the challenges that Tesla is facing with getting this next level of autonomous driving software ready to ship. Version 9 will be the update that shifts full self-driving over to a pure vision-based navigation system. All of the car's radar sensors will be deactivated and it will drive based on cameras alone. So far, Tesla has been running autopilot on the Model 3 and Model Y with no radar and it seems to work just fine. However, this beta version of FSD is way more complex than what standard autopilot offers. It will be navigating intersections and making left turns all on its own. Apparently, Elon's car has been running Pure Vision FSD for some time now and he's very happy with it, though undeniably biased, Tesla is supposed to also be opening up the subscription model to full self-driving with the version 9 update. That means anyone will be able to pay for the product on a month-to-month -month basis instead of needing to drop 10 grand all in one go. If this all comes within a reasonable time frame and everything works great and subscription uptake is good, then this could really be the bullish signal that investors have been waiting for and this could finally get Tesla's stock price back on track for growth in 2021. The mayor in Fort Lauderdale announced that the Boring Company has submitted a proposal to build an underground transit system in the city. The mayor tweeted on June 30th, Fort Lauderdale has received a proposal from Elon Musk's The Boring Company to build an underground transit loop between downtown and the beach called the Las Olas Loop. This represents an innovative and unprecedented approach to addressing traffic congestion and transit needs. Since the beginning of the year, Mayor Trantalis has communicated with the Boring Company for a potential project in New River. The Fort Lauderdale mayor visited the Las Vegas Convention Center Loop in February, a trip that Trantalis called very productive. The mayor noted that he came home with many ideas about tunneling solutions to resolve traffic congestion. The Boring Company estimated that a tunnel in downtown Fort Lauderdale would come to between 30 and $60 million to construct. In comparison, the Florida Department of Transportation proposed building a 55-foot high bridge with an estimated cost of $445 million. The Las Olas Loop that the Boring Company recently proposed to Fort Lauderdale may actually be a bigger project than the original tunnel that the mayor wanted to be built in New River. According to a new filing with the Federal Communications Commission, SpaceX plans to test its Starlink internet network aboard Starship's debut orbital flight. Filed on June 28th, SpaceX's Special Temporary Authority application contains a number of surprising details about the company's plans to expand the experimental use of its Starlink satellite constellation to communicate with rockets in flight. In the filing, the company wrote, SpaceX intends to demonstrate high data rate communications with Starship and the Super Heavy Booster on the ground at Starbase Texas during launch, during booster recovery, in flight, and during re-entry. Starlink can provide unprecedented volumes of telemetry and enable communications during atmospheric re-entry when ionized plasma around the spacecraft inhibits conventional telemetry frequencies. These tests will demonstrate Starlink's ability to improve the efficiency and safety of future orbital spaceflight missions. Traditionally, all spacecrafts capable of re-entry produce a superheated sheath of plasma as they blast through Earth's upper atmosphere. That plasma effectively blocks most radio waves, creating an inevitable several minute long communications blackout for any re-entering spacecraft. In the case of an important test flight, much like the one SpaceX is about to attempt, they can't afford to lose any data. So having Starship transmit with no blackout period will be a huge advantage for SpaceX. 
Engineers previously tested a Starlink dish antenna aboard the Starship SN15 prototype, which flew 10 kilometers above Boca Chica Beach earlier this year. The dish was hooked to the exterior of the stainless steel vehicle. Once Starship is operational, SpaceX officials have said that they could use the Starlink broadband constellation to provide service aboard the spacecraft in transit to the moon and even Mars. That means you can check your Twitter on the trip to Mars, which you'll probably need because it's going to take six months. All right, that's it for today's video. Don't forget about the Tesla Tequila Prize giveaway. Step one, subscribe to the Tesla Space newsletter if you're not already. Step two, open your newsletter every Tuesday morning and find your unique referral link at the bottom of the email. Step three, send that link out to people you think will love Tesla and SpaceX news as much as you do. The more successful referrals you get, the more entries into the prize draw. If you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.